Now, we've rearranged this room a little bit so that if you feel sleepy, you can go and stand in the back of the room if you're falling asleep. You don't want us, any of the counselors to catch you falling asleep because you'll have to go stand. Okay? We don't want anybody sleeping. Yes, sir. Oh. Thank you. Did you hear that? When you're asking a question, you stand up and rec so you can be recognized. Okay? Thank you. Is that better? Thank you. Okay, we're going to have a flag class today. We're going to talk about all the flags up here, some of the stuff on the table, what these different flags over here are. We talked a little bit about it last night when we brought in the emblem flags, and you saw all that. We're going to tell you some about the others. And then we're going to open up the questions for you guys, any questions you might have about the flag, and we'll try to answer it. We're not experts. We'll try to answer it. If we can answer it, That better? Okay. So we're going to open up the questions for you all, for any questions. We're not experts. We can try to answer it. If we can't answer it, we'll find the answer for you. Okay? I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from, from, the, sent, from the consent of the governed. A democracy, a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one inseparable, established upon the principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity, for which American patriots sacrificed their lives and fortunes for. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. Anybody know what that is? Anybody tell me? No, sir. No, sir, it's not. Anyone else? I believe it's printed in your manual. It's the American Creed. Now, when I was a kid, several hundred years ago, we used to say that in school, along with the Pledge of Allegiance. They don't do that much anymore. I mean, I know you, a lot of you say the Pledge of Allegiance. How many schools still say the Pledge of Allegiance? Very good, very good, great. Okay, first question I have is our flags that we have up here set up correctly? Shaking your head, yes. Why are they set up correctly? Yes. That is part of it, yes. Count these in with the mix, though. Let's just say that all these were in one row. Would they be set up correctly? Okay. Yes, sir. Why do you have it on the right side? Okay, that's good, okay. He's right, it's higher, and it's to the right. It's to the right because that's the position of honor. Now, you, some of you might be looking, well, that's not on the right. The way you're looking at it, it's on the left. So, a way to remember where to place the U.S. flag is when you're looking at it, it's on your left-hand side, which makes it the position of honor, okay? Now, for, for the rest of the flags, how do we determine how all these are set up? Yes, sir. That's pretty close. That's, that's actually the correct answer. The Army was the first service, the senior service. Calm down, Matt. Um, 
Then it was the Marine Corps and the Navy. Now there's an argument about that because the Marine Corps and the Navy are the same under the same branch. However, the Marine Corps is its own service. And the Marine Corps actually signed the documents a few days before the Navy, so they get first. The Marine, it's Army, Marines, Navy, and then we come into more controversy because the Coast Guard's older than all of them, actually. But it wasn't necessarily deemed as a branch of the service until recently. It usually falls under Homeland Security. The Coast Guard used to be activated by the Secretary of the Navy when it was needed. But when Homeland Security came up, they fell under Homeland Security. They are still indoctrinated as DOD when needed, so they're counted as DOD. Then you have the United States Air Force, okay? And then our newest branch of the service is the United States Space Force that was established in 2019. Then you get to our organizational flags, and it's just like he said, in order of, by age, or when you get to the Legion, who came first? The American Legion was first, then the Auxiliary, then the SAL, then the American Legion Riders. We talked about those last night. Then we have our organizational flag of the family up there. Then we have our boy state flag up there. And the last one is, oh, there's a 100-year flag up there because the Legion turned 100 years old about three years ago. Okay? So now I'm going to ask you guys a question. What do you think about an organization that got together and made rules but in the first line of the rules, it says there's no punishment if you violate these rules. Think that makes sense? Yes, sir. Hmm? Well, okay. Good point. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Okay, well, okay. Yes, sir. Correct. What I'm talking about is the United States flag code. In 1923, a bunch of organizations got together, 68 of them to be exact, the American Legion was one of them, and came up with rules for how we would take care of our flag. Now, they said they wanted to make sure everyone took care of it the same way. We raise it the same way, lower it the same way, fold it the same way, when we can put it outside, when we can't put it outside, when we should fly it, all that stuff. But the first thing it says, well, that flag allows us to have freedoms to do what we want. So if you don't want to follow this, you don't have to. But here's the rules if you're doing it. And this gentleman was correct. What was your name again, sir? Uh, William Hank? Hank is actually correct because it's a moral code. You know that we're not supposed to take this flag outside, throw it on the ground, stomp on it. We know that. It's not supposed to happen. But there's no rule against you going out and doing it. If, if Seth wants to come up here and grab it and take it out of the building, he can do that. He can throw it on the ground, put it in a mud puddle, he can do all that because that flag guarantees him the right to do that. However, there may be a few fellas in here that don't like that. So I know there's a few veterans in here that wouldn't like that. So, I mean, it, it's a moral code. We know it's not supposed to happen. So that's what the flag code is designed to do. Now, we've got some stuff down here in the front, and I want to talk a little bit about it. 
There's three flags down here. They're folded, but they're all different. I know the guys in the front row can probably see this better, but hold up this flag here. What, how is it different than the rest? Yes, sir. Okay, the colors are different, a little bit different shade. That's correct. I'm not talking about color and, and that kind of stuff. Yes, sir, in the black. Correct. That's true, too. Yes, sir? And why would we make them out of different materials? Okay, very good. Honesty, that's the best policy, okay? They are different materials. The one that Doug had held up here is called an all-weather flag. That is the one we would take outside, okay, and hang. If we took the one in the middle, which is an interment flag, it's made out of cotton. If it's in a windstorm, it's going to rip up pretty quick and fade and all that. The nylon flag lasts longer, so that's called an all-weather flag, okay? Now, the one on the end, there's really no difference in it than any of the others, other than the fact that it is a 48-star flag. There's only 48 stars on it. So my question to you now is, can we still fly that flag? Who says no? Raise your hand. Who says no? Who says yes? All right. Yes, over here. Why don't you guys tell me why we can still fly it? Yes, sir. Very close. Yes, you're, that's correct. Yes. Both those answers are correct. You put them together and you're right. At one time, that flag was authorized by the United States to fly. So as long as that flag still is able to fly, meaning it's not ripped, it's not torn, it's not faded, doesn't have pieces missing, you can still fly it. Now, I'm going to give you a word here that's used a lot in the flag stuff. It's called serviceable. If a flag is still serviceable, you can use it. And that's because it doesn't have those things I just mentioned, the rips, the tears, the fading, all that. This flag over here, they're unfairing. Who would want to fly this over their house? Yes? All you guys are yes, you'd fly it over your house? Okay, why wouldn't we fly this? Yes, sir. It's torn, okay. Yes, sir. Faded, yes. All the things we just talked about, this flag is considered unserviceable. This flag should be retired because it's not fit for service, okay. Now, tomorrow, you're going to, actually, your class is going to put on a flag retirement ceremony. And we're going to show how a flag is retired. And that's a flag that would be retired, okay? Now, let's just say, the one down here that's pretty good shape, we open it up and it's got a little tear on the end of it. Well, technically we shouldn't fly that. But can we fix it? Can we sew it? Who says yes? Okay, why would, how, I mean, tell me about that. Okay, correct. So we can take purple thread and fix it, right? No, no, <laughs> okay. No, it has to be the same colors, the same size, all that stuff. Now. Sometimes you'll see flags that they're torn on the end, and people will cut them, rehem them, and that's okay. I mean, you can't take a whole swat out of it, you know, a 12-foot thing here. You can't do that, but 
you can take a little bit off the end and sew it underneath, okay? So that's true. Now, what about, I ask Landon and Hunter here to go outside. To the flag, not right now, you don't have to go now. At the flagpole, and they are gonna raise the flag. Well, it gets a little stormy here once in a while, I understand. Been here a couple times, it rains pretty hard here. And the flag and wind comes up and it blows and it hits the ground and it hits a mud puddle. Now, can we take that flag and wash it? Who says no? Why can't we not wash it? Why can't we wash it? Okay, that's a viable option. Yes, sir. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that part in a minute. As long as the flag remains, what did I say earlier? Serviceable, you can do it. So the gentleman that said it would fade, that's true. You can wash it. If it fades it and it doesn't look right, then you wouldn't, it would become unserviceable. But if it just fell in the water, in the mud, and you got and cleaned it up and everything's okay, you could still fly it because it's still serviceable. Okay? So let's talk about your question here. Okay, it hit the ground. And the flag code that we talked about earlier says if you have to retire a flag, it's done by burning. That's correct. Now, why do we use the method of burning? Does anybody know? Yes, sir. Okay. I can go with that. Anything else? There's another reason other than what you said. Yes, sir. That is absolutely correct. We use burning so that it is completely destroyed. Okay, so no part of it can ever be used because in that same flag code, it says when a flag's retired, you can't take any pieces of it and use it for something else. There was a, a while that there were people that were taking and cutting the stars out of flags that were going to retire, and they would give them to people as a memento of a flag. Well, technically, that's wrong by the flag code. You're not supposed to do that. So we don't do that. Now... So it needs to be serviceable, it needs to stay serviceable. If you have to retire it, you do it by burning. Who can tell me what half mass is? Yes, sir. Okay. Who can... Uh, Determine that our U.S. flag goes to half staff. Yes, sir. Well, you're half right. The president is the one that does that, yes. However, there are 50 other people that can do that. Who would that be? The governor. Now, Governor Justice, our governor, can he go, where's the gentleman from Virginia? Mr. Chambers. Is he not? Oh, there he is. Can our governor go over to your state and fly the flag at half mass? Why not? That's correct. You're absolutely right. Every governor has the authority to do that within his or her state. Okay? Thank you. Didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Um, so when we're putting it at half mass, we were talking about this. We know who can put it at half mass. So how do we do that? Do we just take it halfway up the pole and leave it? Yes, sir.
Very good. Thank you. I don't know if I need to teach you guys anything else. You're getting most of these answers right. I need to stop here. Um, now, have you ever seen a flagpole that doesn't have the cord on it or the chain that raises it up? Ever, you've seen those. How do you put those at half mast? See, I have one of those in my yard. It's a telescopic pole. So if you take it down, you have a shorter pole, but the flag's still at the top. Yes, sir. Black stripe. You're absolutely correct. See, I told you, I don't need to teach this anymore. You guys, you guys got all this down. So, Yes, now, the stipulations of this, the American Legion and other organizations put in the flag code recently that this could be used to signify that the flag is at half mass. The stipulation is it has the streamer has to be the same size as the stripes on the flag. And of course, some flags have different size stripes, so you would have to get the black streamer that matches that to put it in. Okay. So I want to open up to questions and then we'll come and show some more stuff on the tables here. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. You have to petition with the U.S. government, and there can be no changes to the U.S. flag, according to the flag code that's already existing, to the flag till the 4th of July. Okay? See, what's today? Today's what? The 13th? Does anybody know what tomorrow is? Thank you. Yes, it's the 14th. Is there a special day tomorrow that we're honoring? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's tomorrow is Flag Day. That's the day the flag was unfrailed as the actual flag of the U.S. back when. Okay. So, if you change to answer your question, sir, to an to change the flag, it has to be put through a commission, through Congress and then added to that code. But it, if you did it on August 1st, it wouldn't change until the next 4th of July. That's the rule they have in the flag code. Okay? Because when they first started, they were putting all the stars in, and they were originally, each stripe was for a star, or for a state. Well, they got, after they got so many states, they said, this is too much. So that's when they made the stars signifying each state and the stripes for the 13th column, 13 colonies. Okay? So it has to go through that thing. When they changed that rule was when they had like 15 states at one time wanted to change the flag. So they all got changed the same day on the 4th of July. Okay? Yes, sir. Well, that's true. There are three major companies in the U.S. that make flags. Valley Forge, Omni, and there's a new one that's out, and I, the name escapes me, but it's the third company that are U.S. flags that are made. Now, you'll see flags all over the place. It's made all everywhere. China, Japan, Germany, all these different places, they make the flags. But the U.S. flags are there. As long as the flag meets the specifications of the flag code, they will allow a company to make them. How durable they are is another story. Because you can buy flags and put them out one day, and you'll have to take it down and change it the next because it's ripped to shred. Because the material's thinner, you know, that kind of stuff. So a, a minting process, no. It just has to meet the specifications of, of the code. Thank you. Yes, sir. They have the same rules, but they're, they're, you usually don't have a ceremony to retire one of the little ones. A lot of times, 
organizations, what they have a bunch of the little ones, they'll fold it up in a regular size flag and retire them all together. I mean, that can be done. But it still has, it still has the same thing, same stipulations on it as the flag code says. It's just, you know, you wouldn't have a whole ceremony for one of those little, <laughs> little flags. Yes, sir. Yes. That's okay. Some states do. West Virginia has some rules for the West Virginia flag, but they follow, most states follow under the flag code. So we've also, here at Boise State, we have retired state flag as well, our state flag as well, along with the U.S. flag. Yes, sir. I have not heard that. I mean, the last time the flag, go ahead, Matt. Yes, sir. Well, on Friday nights, <laughs> you're going to know that. There are 13 folds that goes to our flag, and there's a, a verbiage that goes with each fold. And I don't want to let the kitty out of the bag here, so we'll wait till Friday and you'll get your answer. Is that okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. No, because that is a different flag. That is made differently, specifically for that organization. Yes, it, it looks like that. It's basically what Doug just said. It's a society flag, not an official U.S. flag. I mean, it's, it's a, a flag for honoring police officers. No, there would not be an issue with that because I'm sure before they put that out nationally, they went and got permission to do it. So. I think there was not clarification on something William brought up about the flag touching the ground. Well, that is true. The flag code specifically says that if, if, they, if the flag touches anything beneath it, it should be retired or destroyed. However, every time the flag touched the ground, we destroyed it, we would be spending more money getting flags than anything else. These two guys that went out and it hit the ground. Who did I say? Seth and Hunter? Is that what I said? Seth and Hunter was going outside. If they went out and it hit the ground and we washed it and it came out and it was serviceable, that's okay. That complies with the flag code. However, it doesn't comply with the flag code because it touched something beneath it. But there's also a clause in the flag code that says you have to use common sense. So. If they purposely went outside and threw it and stuffed it in the mud and all that, that would be different. But by accident, if it does that, you have to play that by ear. As long as it stays serviceable after you clean it and all, you're okay. The way to retire a U.S. flag that is no longer serviceable is by burning in an honored ceremony, which you'll see tomorrow night. Okay? Somebody else? Yes. There's some variations. Uh, we have some pamphlets that we'll be passing out throughout the week to you. And on the back of it, 
It comes from the West Virginia Department of Veterans Assistance, and it says that the red is for the blood that was shed, the white is for purity, and the blue is for the sea of tranquility. I'm, but there's other books that have different things that say that. I don't know if I've ever seen one specific thing of what that's for. Does anyone else know? So I'll look that up, Caden, and see if I can find something more specific on that. Thank you. So, hmm? yes, sir. There is a specific way, and we have tried and tried, to fold the West Virginia flag where that the seal is visible. And it's on the state website of how to do it. We've tried, and we can never get it the way it's supposed to be. That's one. Most of the time, you'll see the West Virginia flag folded in the triangle. Uh, but there is a way, supposedly, you can get it so the seal's up front. Uh, other ones, I don't know. They still, you still shouldn't morally let it touch the ground or be dirty or faded and all that stuff. So those are all the same. But actual other specifics, no. I don't think there's that much difference. Hmm? Yes, sir. Very good question. As we said, the U.S. flag is always in the position of honor. However, in New York is a good example of this at the U.N. There are five countries that started the U.N. Those five are first. Since we're in New York, the U.S. flag is first on the row of flagpoles and then down from there. Um, when I was stationed in Germany, Every day when they had retreat ceremony, the flags came down. They played the German national anthem first, then the U.S. national anthem. You played them both. So when they're side by side, depending on where you are in the country is what they would do. Now, on the base, our flag still took the position of honor on the Ramstein Air Base. But it would depend. Downtown, they probably would have it differently. So... I don't know if that really answered your question. Did it? Yes. Okay. Okay. I've been told we're done. I hope you, you gentlemen enjoyed this. Just remember, I've got one final thing to say to you. We talked a lot about the flag. We talked about the flag code. You asked good questions. But there's a lot of people that sacrifice for that piece of cloth or whatever you want to call it. So you could sit here today. Boys your age in other countries don't get the same privileges you get. And people that came long before us made sure we got that freedom. So I'm going to ask a favor of you fellas. When you are at an event of some type and the national anthem plays, Stand up and give it the respect that that flag deserves. And you know what? I'll bet you if you do it, the person beside you will do it. And all, and all the way around the arena, the room, whatever you're in, everybody will be doing it. The anthem's only two minutes long. You can stay quiet for that long enough. But if you set the example, other people will follow you. Thanks for your attention, guys. Hope you have the rest of the week a very good week. Thank you.